So why did I just take a big chunk of this frame out just to do an engine swap? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, welcome to the Unbeaten Path. I'm Roland. And I'm Freddie. And uh, today we are going to show you uh, kind of the um, kind of the basics of what it's going to take if you want to swap out your common rail for a 12 valve. So in other words, if you want to take the engine out of this truck and swap it over to this truck. All right, guys. So here are some of the basic parts and uh, potential tools and things like that that you uh, may need to do this kind of swap. And um, so we're just gonna go ahead and kind of run through them real quick and kind of give you an idea of what you might need to pick up uh, in order to uh, do a swap like this. All right, well, for starters, uh, we don't have the plates yet, but you have to have a quarter inch steel plate for each side to make an adapter to move your engine mounts one hole back, like one bolt hole back. Um, you will need a 13 millimeter metric uh, drill bits. I got two in case I wore one out because they are cheap. Uh, and a ten and a half millimeter drill bits. Uh, four bolt holes will be drilled out for the bolts to go through, and then two of them will be drilled out and tapped. So both uh, both these taps are for the engine adapter mounts, and they're M12 by 1.75. That is the thread pitch and thread size for the uh, factory bolts that goes into the motor mounts. And here is the adapter that will be for the power steering return line, sizing it down. And here is two pipe plugs that I have drilled out and are tapping for uh, the oil pressure and uh, temperature sensor from the 06 engine into the 12 valve. Since I'm running an exhaust brake, I'm going to be upgrading to uh, what they call 60 PSI exhaust valve springs. I'm only doing the exhaust side because I don't really need to do the intake side. And while I have them out, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to uh, what they call top hat uh, valve stem seals. We'll have the part number for that in the description below. And right here is an adapter that I had to order to thread into the 12 valve block for another sensor. And here I have a valve spring compressor tool because I'm uh, upgrading the exhaust valve springs. And since I'm pulling the valve springs loose, um, I went ahead and got a uh, kit to replace the O-rings on the injector since we're pulling the injectors to make sure the pistons are at top dead center. And here I have a very simple but easy to use injector puller tool. This right here is just an old patent gasket. And then the largest rear main seal I've ever seen in my life. All right, so we went ahead and took the bumper off uh, because essentially what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna take this radiator support and stuff off and, and the radiator and uh, all, these, uh, all this cooling equipment, stuff like that, all this is gonna come off. Uh, that way the engine can pretty much just come straight out of the front of the truck. Hey guys, make sure that you take your vehicle to a certified shop to have them uh, vacuum pump out the uh, Freon from your uh, AC setup uh, because A, uh, you're not supposed to vent that stuff out into the air and also it is highly pressurized. So if you was to like try to take these lines off with the pressure still on it, you'll probably kill yourself. So don't do that. Now, luckily the AC compressor had already been replaced and they didn't recharge the system. So we didn't have to worry about it. All right, with the common rail Cummins, the uh, automatic transmission cooler is known to uh, not only sometimes clog up, but this thermostat is known to stick open, bypassing most of the cooler. So a lot of times people uh, throw these away and upgrade for a better one. Okay, guys, and of course this is, you know, just the part where you're taking apart everything that you need to get out of the way, like the radiator hoses and the radiator and things like that. Now, I will say um, I would definitely make sure to keep and be careful to uh, not damage uh, any of the cooling system setups uh, on the 06 uh, because it is a lot larger and a lot more efficient than the older model. All right, guys, so 
there's a few different ways that people seem to be taking these out. Now, I'm not a professional by any means. This is actually the first time I've ever even worked on a common rail truck. So, so from what we have seen on the interwebs is a few people have done some techniques where they take these bolts out and they like stretch and pull these out to get this out because this frame rail section here is slid up into here and here. So like the only way to get it out is either for these two pieces to be pulled apart or to cut this bar. Um, we both have a welder, we're both confident with welding. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it here and here. That'll drop this center section out, take these bolts out and then these pieces will slide out. And then when we go to uh, put this back in, we'll, we'll just have it, we'll just weld it back up. So should be easy peasy. So also, woo, also know that this uh, cross member piece here, it has bolts on the top and the bottom. So. Do you have a 13 millimeter wrench? No. Yes you do. This is definitely one of the best tools I've ever bought. We have a short socket, I got that breaker bar. This adapter right here for the uh, power steering return line actually will go right here coming off of the power steering cord and back into the reservoir on the 12 valve it's a smaller line and so that's where this adapter is needed to feed back into the reservoir all right guys there's no easy way around this uh this is the uh, non-glamorous part of engine swaps um so pretty much the parts that you've not seen that uh we didn't record was just like the little stuff Taking off all the obvious things like removing the uh, radiator and the radiator hoses and the alternator and, you know, the uh, uh, battery lines and coolant lines and all this stuff. You know, this is all just regular, everyday, normal stuff that you know that you have to take, a, uh, take off in order to get the engine out. So we're just about finished with that. We're kind of fighting with the harness right now. Uh, but the majority of all the, uh, the obvious things are now coming off the truck so we're we're just about ready to go ahead and uh and unbolt the engine from the trams and stuff and get this engine out all right guys so it is now day two uh, we got a late start yesterday so we only had a couple hours to get started uh so here is where we're at now this engine is about ready to come out we've got the wiring harness and everything unhooked all the trans bolts and everything out uh, you didn't really miss much it's just getting again like i said getting all the obvious things unhooked from the engine so you're ready to go now here's something you probably don't know for our donor truck uh we took all the obvious things off the front we got the front bumper off we got the intercooler and the intercooler piping the radiator all that good stuff now in order to get the core support off there are several things that you need to do there are bolts all across the bottom that you need to get there are bolts right there are bolts right here uh, that connect the fender to the fender well those will have to come out at least partial of the way up uh, there's a bracket right here you'll have to undo that uh, let's see there is another bracket right here that'll have to come off all of these bolts and stuff right here because this kind of like sandwiches in uh, with each other and we also had to bend this up slightly so that way this would clear so then this had to be pushed over and out a little ways to pry this out now that we've got that though we should be able to just lift this up and then slide it out to the driver's side so that way we don't have to worry about taking anything off this 
Passion's Offender. Let's see if it works the way we think. Probably not. Awesome. So it actually came out like we were hoping it was. So, like I said, the main thing was getting all of these little bolts here out and all, pretty much everything from here forward that prevents this fender from moving. So all you really need to do is just pry this one fender over and bend this up a little bit, then you can bring it out without having to unbolt everything. Is this the best method? Probably not. Is it the preferred method? Probably not. Did it work? Yes. All right, guys, so we've now made it to a point where I can kind of show you some stuff. Way down deep back in there, you can see his hand down in there. There is a plug that he, put, that he just now got loose. Um, that was the last thing that was holding us up from getting the engine out. Here is what these engine mounts look like. This right here bolts to the block. And you got this clamshell design um, that goes to the uh, frame. So in the frame, it's like a C shape and it just sits on it like this. So all you need to do is just loosen this up and then you can take these four bolts out after you've got the engine on a hoist. And then you can totally remove these engine mounts so that way the engine will just slide straight out of the front. Okay guys, so listen up. The, the average V8 can typically weigh around 400 pounds. Uh, most transmissions somewhere, you know, two to 300 pounds. So even together, you know, you're, you might be looking at six to 700 pounds uh, pulling an engine and a trans out, uh, most typical setups. However, these diesel engines are in the ballpark of around 1,300 pounds, the engine alone. So please be super careful. Make sure that you have a two-ton capacity lift or greater. And make sure you got somebody there with you to help uh, because uh, pulling these engines are incredibly dangerous. So you definitely want to make sure you have all the proper tools and equipment and make sure you got somebody to land a helping hand. All right, so as you can see, engine on this one is out. Now, time to get that one out. Path. I'm rolling. This I'm is Freddy. Freddy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you was going to redo that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh. Oh, that dumped the coin out. Get the bucket! <laughs> That's one. Well, she said. <laughs> so why did I just hack a chunk of this frame out just to do an engine swap? Because. Because. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> Grab that WD and be like, Hey, Don, why don't you tell the camera what we're doing? Hating life. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I can't even see. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yay, bloopers. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what that was. I was like, I was saying, I was like, I can't even see what I'm doing, and then something poked my head. <laughs> you know what's gonna be hilarious is that the blooper reel on this on this episode is gonna be like the same length as the actual like Vide <laughs> good video itself. Uh, <laughs> the cab collapses. Yeah, I was gonna say we take this out and the things like the fenders like the top of the fenders touch each other. And the hood looks like a taco. Uh, it's 
a bug. Ah! It's right here. Get it off of me! <laughs> I'd be so mad if I... <laughs> hey, the blooper reel!